Welcome in uh, behalf of uh, Harvest of Asher. I want to welcome everyone here. We were fortunate to meet Guy 10 years ago in Israel. He's become a very close friend of ours. And when he was planning to come to America, I said, well, I'll try to come around the time of the MJA conference. And he was able to. He's been making speaking engagements, and we're very fortunate to have him here. He's going to speak from his heart, maybe uh, something a little more serious than what you thought you were going to get to. So, <coughs> let's pray for the Lord's blessing upon uh, this time together. Abba Veshamayim, as we uh, gather together in your name here, we ask for a special anointing and blessing on Guy. He is here as your faithful servant and wants to speak your words, not his words. Not my words, but your words, Lord. So give him an inspiration by the Holy Spirit, the exact things that we need to hear. And help us, Father, to be sensitive and have open ears and open eyes and open hearts so that we can receive the word that God brings us today. Bless him. We're here to honor you, to bring honor to your name here on earth, Father. Because it's in that name that we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> And, um, we have a little space here in front. Um, thank you so much for coming over here and um, um, willing to hear what's going on uh, in Israel, what God is doing about the work, about the ministry of the uh, Harvest of Russia. Am I loud? Yes. <coughs> okay. I need to be like Yeshua, speaking to 5,000 people <laughs> without any techniques. Amen. 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 Um, so thank you so much for coming over here. And um, I would like in the end uh, to keep time uh, for you to uh, have a questions. I will start with uh, forgiveness. I'm not uh, speaking your language. I'm not speaking your language. Hallelujah, my Hebrew is perfect. Let's see you. Hallelujah, okay, let's see you. Let's see you. So, I, I will have some mistakes in my English, in my Vocabulary. Uh, okay. So my name is Guy Cohen, and Guy uh, it's not American name. <laughs> Everyone cars ask me, so Guy, it's American. Why did you change your name? No, and I'm not American, and I'm not French. I'm Israeli. Guy in Hebrew it means valley, and every Hebrew name has a meaning. <coughs> So, me, guy, it means valley in between mountains. When you drive to Jerusalem, near Beit Shemesh, there is the Shah Agai. Yes, it's the gate of the valley to Jerusalem. By the way, this is, uh, I was born in 1973, and uh, young, yes. Uh, and my father called me on this name because of the Shah, Shah Agai, the, 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 the open gate to Jerusalem. So, and my wife's name is Tali. And Tali, uh, it's a fog, it's a fog, uh, it's a dew, and so when you see the fog and the dew in between the mountains in the morning, very peaceful, very romantic. <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> okay. um, I'm here to share with you a, a need, a, and I'm not here not for your silvers and not for your gold. I'm here for your heart. I'm here for earning your prayers. Um, we are all looking into these things of the end times, when Yeshua will come and how will come, but we don't. And we want to see him now, yes? yes. But we are bold. And yes, we will hold. But it's not easy. 
it's not easy. Uh, last summer, uh, we lost uh, one of our soldiers. It's a young boy, which uh, was his uh, a leader or a, a youth leader mm -hmm. in Tents of Mercy, and uh, mm -hmm. he died in the war. So until the last war, I thought that we are protected, mm -hmm. that God is protecting us. And, but we need to remember that we are still mankind. But as a believers, we, uh, we have a crisis and we have uh, challenges. And this is why I'm here. I'm here to share with you our challenges and to ask you to pray for us, to pray for the local body of Yeshua in mm -hmm. the land, mm -hmm. that it will be in unity, that it will impact the society around us, and uh, when there is a war and the rumors of war, to continue to do the work that God has called us to bring in His name. And so far, I would like to give thanks for the NJA, for the people here that support and, mm -hmm. and done many things, not just with Harvest of Asher, with, with the body in the land. And so thank you so much for what you are doing until now for my brothers and sisters in the land. We need you. Definitely we need you. The population in Israel of believers is 0.02%. Uh, some say that we, we are 14,000. Some say that we are 20,000. I believe that we are 14,000. So the body of Yeshua in the land is a very, very tiny, little. And uh, how, how do you say that? Seedling? When there is a seedling? <coughs> Sidling, you need to help me with my English. Okay? So it's not just one way, it's both. So the body of Yeshua is a seedling, and the enemy is trying to destroy us. The enemy is trying to split. The enemy is trying to break. And, and, uh, and, and that's what I'm here, to ask you to pray for us so the body will be maintained, that we will continue to be strong, mm -hmm. even the hard times are uh, coming against us. Um, I would like to share with you a testimony, how mm -hmm. the Lord opened my eyes to see you. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, it's a little bit background about me, because my heart, is, is, as you heard, is to see Israel saved. All Israel saved. Amen. Call Israel. Yes. Amen. Amen. There, there is a church, there are places, there is a place here in the back. Um, when I was 13 years old, is there is a pen over here? Is that if I can write something? Good. When I was 13 years old, are you, I'm going to make for you an Hebrew lesson. <laughs> when I was 13 years old, my rabbi, I was studying Orthodox. In, a, in, a, in Akko, in the area where we are living. I will speak about the city later on. And my rabbi, we study Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. You can open your Bible and read. And over there it says that the Messiah will come to Jerusalem on a chamo. Mm -hmm. So I asked I ask my rabbi, how could it be that the Messiah will come to Jerusalem on a chamo? Chamo, it's a donkey. Yeah. So, a colt. So how could it be that the Messiah, the Savior of the world, will come to Jerusalem on a chamor? This is chamor. Ha -mo oh, we are writing from the right to the left. Yes. From the right way. <laughs> this is chamor. And my rabbi was a Kabbalist and he played with the word and the numbers and all of this. So I don't want to jump into this. He took the three roots of this word. It's chet mem resh, chet mem resh. And then he said chemar, chomer, chomer. Chamor it's a donkey, chomer it's material. So he moved this one over here. And it's the same number of letters. If you know that the, 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 the Bible code, there is a playing with the word and all of this. So he said to, my, to me, well, my son, the Messiah will come to Jerusalem on a chomer. Now, chomer is a donkey. Chomer, it's material. 
Yeah, he will come to Jerusalem on a material, on a car, on an airplane. When I, when I heard this teaching, I didn't uh, accept it. But hold this story. When I was 18 years old, functioning Orthodox life, seeing rabbis that uh, teaching the people and, and, and manipulating people and controlling people, or if there is, a, in, let's say, in the feast of autonomy, in the fest of the autonomy, the autonomy is the fest where we are command to come uh, the, to the synagogue and we are command to fast and cry out before God. In Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23, we see that the hair on high priests were allowed to come into the Holy of Holies only in the day in, in Israel until today. This day is high and holy and everyone are going to uh, the synagogue. So I am a priest. Did you, did you realize that my family name is Cohen? <laughs> Cohen. Go hey. <laughs> priest, I belong to the priesthood lineage. And if I'm going to the synagogue, doesn't matter whenever, if they are here that I'm a coin, immediately they will take me in. They want me, doesn't matter if I believe in Yeshua. It's so it's so high in the in the Israeli society. Wow, I would have so hard to not open my eyes to see. Mm. You remember that Nicodemon, he was also. Right. And he believed in Yeshua, so I'm not the first coin. <laughs> <laughs> and also in the in X it says that many Kohanim came to, to believe in Yeshua. Okay, I'm not going to jump over there now. But when I was I came into the in the synagogue and, and I'm a coin and I'm a grandson of a, a rabbi in the city well known. It was my grandfather's synagogue, the day was the day of autonomy sitting in the, in the synagogue waiting for the <coughs> prayer to start. Instead, the prayer started in the house of God. They made an auction. Who wants to read the Torah? 100, 200, 300. Who wants to hold the Torah? 100, wow. 300, 1,000. Who wants to receive blessings? Different kind of blessings, Jonah <laughs> blessings. Different kind of blessings. And, and it was marketing in the house of God. I was there and I was sitting there and my, my, my heart was tear. <laughs> and I, uh, a few months later, went out to the streets when I was 18 years old and he's speaking to a guy that pray three times a day and wake early in the morning and keep the commands and keep the laws. I cry out to God and I said, God, what's going on? Why the rabbis? Why the rabbis like <coughs> they're doing this? Why they like people's uh, money with their heart? Mm. You know, Yeshua says about, about the rabbis, about the rabbis, which actually they are, about, he said about the Pharisees and the rabbis, that, that they are they're continuing today, that do listen to what they are saying in Matthew 23, but don't do what they are saying, because they are not doing what they are saying. Well, until today we are, you know, it's not so clear, but this is what uh, I was on, it was on my heart, it was... Um, like, what's going on over here? They are manipulating people. They are controlling people. And, 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 uh, uh, and, and my heart was broken for the poor. At that time, at that time, I uh, was in the, old, in the old city of Akko, and I, when I was crying out to God, I said, God, why did you brought us back to the land of Israel? Mm -hmm. I'm a Jewish from my, on one side, from Morocco, which this is uh, the priesthood that came from uh, Spain. Yeah. And on my mother's side, I'm a Jewish from Yemen. Mm. Real Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and why did you brought us back? I remember talking to my grandmother, and my grandmom says, now we are here in Israel, now the Messiah is going to, to open our eyes, and, and, and in our eyes we'll see you in the, in the return to the Zion. And you are here in Israel, we are ready. To, to see you. And, 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 uh, and she, she didn't see him, she died. Mm. And so this is, I had a lot of questions, why? Why we are here in, in Israel? Why did you brought us back to And the wars, 
We just today spoke about the uh, 91 war, but that was since I was born in 73. When the Yom Kippur war uh, were held, it was the day, of, the day of atonement. I was six months as a baby. And since then, in 81, when I was in my first grade in the school, we've had the first Lebanonese war, and, and we've had uh, terrorism, and we've had many, many things. What, 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 why are we here in the land of Israel? Why did you brought us over here? And then I said, enough orthodox life. In that moment, I took my head covering, the kippah, and I put it into my wallet, and I said, no more orthodox life. Mm -hmm. I will walk, as it, as it says here in the Bible, in the Torah, but I will not do as the rabbis teach it. Okay, uh, <clears throat> you need to remember this. Uh, when I finished this prayer, and it was in the old city of Akko, and Akko is a mixed city, and there is also, there are different kinds of Christianity, Catholicism, and all over this. So when I lift up my eye, it was a cross. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the cross, I said, never, ever, forever. Mm. I'm not going to believe in him. He's not the Messiah. <laughs> I will go. You know, most of the Israelis, you, you, I, I, I think that you wonder, but many Israelis, sabras like me, after the army, you will find them in many places around the world. You can find them in the mall. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but you will find them in India, you will find them in Peru. We, after the army, we just go out. It's, the pressure is so strong mm -hmm. in the land of Israel. Mm. Very, very, it's very strong. So, my, my, uh, my, my, in that moment I said, I don't want to see Yeshua, that he is the Messiah, Jesus. I called him Yeshu. Now, Maybe if we have time, I hope we can we can have yeah. time today. Yes, we can yes. Until, until the evening. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Yeshua in Hebrew is you write it like this. Yeah, Shu. Ah. Mm -hmm. We are calling him Yeshu Yeshu mm. in Israel. Mm. Yeshu. It says Imach. Imach. Shemo Vezicho. Mm -hmm. If you, uh, the Kaddish, you know, when, when we're doing the Kaddish, or if you're going to the, uh, to the funeral of someone, yeah. it always says that he, the, he memor his memory will be go on forever. Right. Yeah. About Yeshua, they took the, this word out, the rabbis, and they gave this name, it means that his name, and his memory will be cast forever, will be forgotten forever. So this is a curse, and this is the way that we are calling him in Israel. Now, this is the way that I was when I was 18 years old. I said, never, ever, forever. Yes, we received a lot. I would like to give you three explanations what we are thinking about him. A, we know that he was a rabbi. But we know that he was a deceiver. It's written in the Talmud about him. It, he was a Tanakh. And he made the witchcraft. And he made a lot of idol worship. B is the Christian world within the years. <coughs> they always persecuted the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. So why should I believe in this God of the Christian people? Of the, those who killed six millions of us. <coughs> and in, as I said, I'm a Jewish from Spain. And we went side to Morocco. It was uh, in 1492 with Jezebel. And Isabella and Ferdinand with the Inquisition. Inquisition. Mm -hmm. And many, many Jewish people were fleeing from Spain to uh, other countries around. Mm -hmm. So why shall I believe in the God of those uh, pork eaters or those mm -hmm. uh, Gentiles? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Strong. Third, which is that we all need to know and see, and it's written in the Bible, in Romans 11, there is a carton, there is a veil on the eyes of Israel yeah. mm. for seeing the Messiah. And we know what, what is the reason the salvation arrived to the world. I did not knew this, but as this is why I said no to Yeshua. Mm -hmm. No to Yeshu. I cursed him. But five years later, after being in the army, and, and, and uh, three years, and then two years, I studied to be a CPA. I studied to, to, uh, to be accounted, and then in the period of this time, I studied uh, as a tech. I, I was work 
as a tax collector uh, in the IRS, Israeli IRS, Mas <laughs> Akhnasa. And uh, I was working as a, as a tax collector. And uh, it was at the noon time. And I went out to the, to the street to eat lunch, coming back to the office around 12 o'clock. And one guy came to me and he handed me a book into my hand, a small book. Mm. And he handed me the book into my hand. Usually I'm not taking things from strangers, but this time mm. I took it. Mm. And I looked at the book and I said, no, no, I don't want it. And I went in his turn mm -hmm. book to give it to him. And this guy was not there. Whoa. I looked Whoa. right and left. This guy was not there. So I ran to get to the streets looking for, for this man. I'm not a charismatic, I'm realistic. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on over here? There is a book in my hand, but the repeat man is not, is not, is not there. I went to the office and I opened the book. It was the Gospel by Matthew. Mm -hmm. And over there, you know, uh, Matthew, I opened it in Matthew 5, verse 30. It says, if your eyes sin, pluck it out. If your hands sin, cut it. It's better for you to suffer here on this earth than winning the entire life. Mm. Wow. <coughs> Strong. That's what I was thinking to myself. Mm. Speaking like my rabbi. <laughs> who, who, who is this rabbi? <laughs> Yeshu, Yeshu. Yes, this is the one. And then I said to myself, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, he was a Jewish, and his disciples were, were Jewish, and most of the world believed in him. Okay, let's read the New Testament just for education. <laughs> <laughs> just opening, opening my mind to see, anyhow, I'm a student, what is not the book to read? <clears throat> for me, when I was 18 years old, and when I grew up as Orthodox, you need to understand that this statement is very, very tough. When you read from the New Testament, you solve the burning hell. Mm. This is what, what, what uh, the teaching that I received. If, I will, if you will read from the New Testament, your soul will burn in hell. Mm. So, but I said, okay, let's read it. <laughs> let's read another book. And I started to read because this is the verses that Yeshua said was so strong that it drew my heart. I want to live holy life to God. And I started to read, and then I arrived to Matthew 21. Matthew 21, verse mm. Mm -hmm. Over there, Yeshua come to Jerusalem on a donkey. <laughs> now, now, now you're going to read it here. Donkey. Ha! Ha! Not on a homer. Right. Chabo. Right. It says Chabo. And, and immediately, I, my eyes were open. Immediately I said, wow, it's so obvious it is the Messiah. Yeah. While I was reading, I, 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 I received a... a uh, a visitation or a, a, I could see that he is the Messiah mm. and I accept him into my heart mm. to be my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this is the way that the Jewish people, the Lord is op opened my eye to see him. Hallelujah. Huh? Yes. Yes. Look, look this. You remember this is the name that we are calling him in Israel. Mm -hmm. right. What is missing? What is this? This word, this word, I, it means I. I. Yes. The I, mm. even in the name of Yeshua, you see, we cursed him, we called him, you calling him Yeshu. But when we will call him Yeshua, our eyes will be opened right. to see him. So, so for me, when the Lord opened, opened my eyes to see Him, hmm. you know, we are Jewish people. When something bad happened, we are com complaining. Right. Right. <laughs> yes, we are complaining. Right. When something good happened, we are complaining. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is from our character. Right. <laughs> we always complain. That's, there is a book over here, it says Complain Nation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I complain. Why me? Why did you open my eyes to see him? Right. Right. 17, 17 years ago, I, th I, I was the only one who believed in Yeshua. <laughs> and, and of course, when, when you ask for something, you get it. Right. And God opened my eyes to see Him. 
And through the books, and through the, the, the uh, Romans 11, 25, 26, he says, all Israel will be saved. He's going to save my people. He's going to open their eyes. Yeah. And with all of the sorrows and the sadness that I was uh, mentioning to you, he <coughs> promised, and I don't see any other nation that's reading, all China will be saved. Wow, millions after, after millions in China saved tonight. Mm. But you see, I, I will tell you how it's the the pen. I hope they have something to erase. <coughs> it's like a, a, it's the world and Israel. When salvation is in here in the world, something small happens in Israel. It's like a wheel that connected. When, when the fullness of the Gentiles will be saved, I will raise the coin. <laughs> so, so when we will see the fullness of the Gentiles, Say we will see Israel say, and that's that's what we are going to see within our eyes. Now we see a big revival. We see, we see a big revival in Russia. <laughs> it was a big joy. Everybody laughing. Hallelujah. How will be a revival in Israel? How it will be? Huh? Wonderful. Amen. It will be wonderful. Let's open Zechariah chapter <coughs> twelve. If you have a Bible, if not, I will read it for you. Which book is it? Verse, verse 10. Well, I have a limit to my English. <laughs> well, if you have, maybe someone that speaks in, that's read English can read it. I can read it in English, but uh, I'm not going to say Pray for an English tongue. Amen. Veshafachti al Beit David ve'al Yushem Yerushalayim ruachen v'tachalunim ve'ibitu elai את אשר דקרו, וסבתו עליו כמספט על היחיד, ואמר עליו כאמר הפכה. When the Messiah will come to see Israel, it will be cry in Israel. Israel. They will cry. Because what? Why? They will see this one, who have they pierced? Yeshua. They will see him, and they will say, oh, you know, uh, I'm giving this example. My wife, always says to me some things, you know, uh, giving me, uh, like telling me things, to, uh, how to do things and all over this. And I'm saying, yes, darling, yes, darling, and I'm not doing it. But when, when someone else come to me and say that to me, ah, oh, yes, of course. And then I'm coming to her and she said to me, honey, I talk to you about it always. You're not listening. <laughs> this is the same, this is the same with the nation of Israel. Yeshua is under the nose. Yeah. Yeah. It's so obvious that he is the Messiah. They are looking over there. Ah, this one from Brooklyn. Ah, this one from... In all over the place, all over the world, but he's under their nose. Mm. They see, you know, the Torah is the, is the shadow of the Messiah. Mm. That's what he's reading. So they have the shadow, the, the feast speaking about him. They know that he has one head, two legs, two hands. And, and they know his image, but they don't know who is he. Right. And it's going to be happen. And God is going to open their eyes. It will happen. God promised all his world, he said. And this is why we are here in Akko. We are in our area. My heart and desire is to see them saved. Yes. How can we do this? We are doing as a congregation. We have the Harvest of Asher, Messianic congregation. We are doing many, many uh, humanitarian aid to, to the surrounding, surrounding area. Our fight is not against man and flesh. Right. Our, our fight against the darkness and principalities of this, wow. of this world. Wow. We are living in the city. You know Jezebel? Jezebel yeah. Spirit, have you heard about it? Yeah. She was born in Akko. Mm. <laughs> so we are living in this city that Jezebel was born. And we all know what is the spirit of Jezebel. Yeah. Right. And we all know about the sacrifice to Molech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice to Molech, it was a baby sacrifice. Right. And this sacrifice of babies to Molech came from a party that they've done. <coughs> they worship to Baal. Mm. You know, the tribe of Asher, we call it Harvest of Asher, right. the congregation. The Lord showed me that the, the, the area of Asher, that God is going to reap the area of Asher, the, the, the area is ready. 
But we are located in the area of Asia. In Judges, uh, <coughs> Judges 31, yes. in Judges 1, 31, the tribe of Asia do not succeed to inherit the city of Akko. And the reason that they are not succeeding, they didn't succeed back then to inherit the city of Akko, is because of the sin. It was because of the idolatry. And they fell into the temptations. God wants us, uh, I, I will tell you, couple getting married, yes? And, the, and the, 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 the groom is asking for the bride to marry. So the bride says to him, yes, honey, I will marry you. But one condition. I will be belong to you 80%. <laughs> okay, okay, 90%. Okay, you know what? I will be I will be loyalty to you 99%. Will, will you agree? <laughs> His God is holy. He wants 100%. 100%. And that's what's happened over there. The tribe of Asher, he fell down. We are in the area where Assyrian, the first exile of Israel, the Assyrian that came and exiled us. I have, I, okay. they, they exiled us. <laughs> it was from this area. Wow. The house of Ahab and the house of, of Jezebel. You know why they married? Because Akko was in the area of uh, Lebanon and back then and, and the Mount of Calvary was the place where Israel. So the immigrants married. Ahab and, and, Isa, and Isa, Jezebel to have a peace between. So when you make a peace like this is your enemy, what happens? Look to the sons of Ahab, Joram, Joram. He kills all over his brothers. So there is no compromise with sin. There is no compromise with sin. So the reason that I'm telling you, we are in the place that until today, there is a baby sacrifice. We are located in the most two high hospitals in Haifa and in Nahariya that making abortion, clinic that make abortion. Abortion is the same baby sacrifice in a different version. Amen. I would like to tell you something, uh, a story that uh, we, we started to pro-life ministry last five years. The congregation is only 10 years, but the, the pro-life we started <coughs> was the last five years, and it was, it was in our heart Amen. to do this, but you know, uh, like to give it the time, but the, I would like to tell you the story that provoke us, <coughs> that, that, that in, in, injured, injured us, in, in yes. a, that took That's us funny. to start this ministry. My sister, girlfriend, and my brother, boyfriend, five and a half years ago, this, he, the, the, my sister, girlfriend was pregnant, and we're speaking over here about family, orthodox family, in the city of Akko. And she was pregnant, and, and she, they wanted to marry, but his family didn't agree, because it's a shame to marry before, you know, to, to, to marry a pregnant lady, it's a big shame. So his parents met the pressure on him to, that she will make an abortion, and he, agree with his parents and he instead to stand with her and support her he encouraged her to make the abortion she didn't wow. want it to do this but she did it and when she did it she split, split she she left her boyfriend oh, yeah. Yeah. and what's happened the, the, this boyfriend committed suicide oh. because of this and it's a big story that well known in the city and Tali and I my wife and I we said if we just knew from my brother, or from my my uh, sister, we could help. Right. That we have, you know, the body in Israel. Thanks God, we are connected very well. Right. With many many messianic com ministries, congregations, with different ways. It's beautiful to see that yeah. the, the unity in the body in the land of Israel. So if we just could knew, we could send her somewhere protected and do something to keep the baby. Mm. Today we could have the baby and the father. Right. And so because of this story, we started the Ministry of Poor Life. Five years old, more than 200 babies saved. Amen. Oh. Amen. So it's just giving you, giving you a lot how tough, tough it is over there. How tough it is. 
And yes, we are ministering to them. In Israel, we have a law. We cannot uh, give aid and help and tell them, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we are doing it. No, you cannot do this. You must to give help, and you do doing different kind of aid, nachon. and when you're doing it for them, you must to go back. You cannot say in the name of Yeshua. It's illegal. But thanks God, we are, we, we are a nation that is uh, always asking questions and always want to know, why do you help me? Right. <laughs> Who you are? Right. 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 So people ask us who you are, not what, what we are, and we are witnessing. We are speaking. Uh, who is Yeshua? Hmm. We are saying the name of the Lord. We are saying the name of God. I don't see yet a big revival, but I, this is on my heart and my yes. to see yes. my brothers and sisters come coming to know Yeshua. Um, this the house of God in, in Israel, the, the Messianic <coughs> brothers. Are, we are going to be in a hard time ahead of us. Mm. I believe, you know Psalm 83? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Psalm 83 speaks about the near nations yes. that will come to take Israel. I believe that we are living in the time yes. of, yeah. Psalm, of Psalm 83, where those nations coming, and we see the IS, IS doing things, putting fear, working with fear, is, you know, it's behind the fence. IS, IS in, in, in the area of, of uh, my, my house from, from Syria, it will take one hour and 20 minutes. Oh, wow. Oh, it's far. Well, it's very far. It's really far. <laughs> For me, it's far. <laughs> but only six hours from one side to the other side, yes? Yeah. Yeah. But they are very close to us. Hezbollah, we have, the, the, in 2006, um, I have a lot of story to tell you. If you want, I can tell yes. you tomorrow. But in 2006, in 2006, uh, you know, we, as I told you, I thought that we are protected. And yes, God protect me in 2006. We, I was running in the shelters, giving aid, giving food. Uh, giving toys to the kids in the shelters, you know, it was a summer. We also provide fan, we also uh, provide transportation for people to drive from <coughs> the north to the south so they can go to the swimming pool and, and rest for one day to refresh. Because you have 15 seconds when you hear the siren. Ooh, when you hear this, 15 seconds. Now, if you are living in the, the seventh floor building, I'm saying, I'm saying buildings that built built on the 80s or 70s, you have the elderly people <coughs> have 70 and 15 seconds to come down to the shelter, and most of the elderly people stay in the shelter in this time. So yes, you need to vent them out. And they can breathe, go to some other place in the in the in the north. But the story that I would like to tell you is. I was giving aid to the shelter boxes and delivering and all of this and, and then the siren started and one, one guy from the, from the shelter says hey this, the alarm is here, stay here I said no, 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 I need to go no, you stay here and, and he hold me there and there is, there is a command to stay 10 minutes and in <coughs> 4 minutes it was boom, near us now I'm thinking if I was going outside, yeah. probably something will happen to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was not just this. I was driving. I went. I went out after after eight minutes. I was driving out. We have ten minutes. Yes, but I was okay going to my home, and then it was another siren. Mm -hmm. And 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 I came near to my home, and 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 I could hear the second rocket hits. Now what happened? Hezbollah. Is shooting one rocket to the place in Israel, <coughs> and when they're shooting this one rocket, do you know what they're doing? They know that people will come to the place, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. and then they are shooting the second rocket to the same place. Right. Mm -hmm. wow. And this is for how six people were killed in in the Lebanon is war in Akko. And I could hear this uh, the shaking uh, in in the windows, and uh, I was outside, and I could. 
it, it, it was like, like, like a fear, it put fear in my heart. And I came in. And I remember that my, my uncle, my aunt, Toda, aunt? Aunt. Okay, aunt. <laughs> we, we took them out to the, to the south. And, and, she, and they were all terrified because they were my parents, it was near my parents' home. They were all terrified and I took them to the south, to my family in the south of Israel. And we started, you know, they were saying, no, we need to go down of this land, we don't want to stay here, they want to kill us, da 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 And, they, and I, started to sing, I started to sing for them a song. Eli Eretz Acheret. You know, someone knows this word? Eli Eretz Acheret, Gaumimat Bati. Oh, Eret. I don't have any other, I don't have other countries, even if my aunt is on the fire. We don't have other countries. This is the country that our fathers were dreaming for two thousand right. years. This is the country that God brought us to. Right. He promised this land to us. And he brought us over there. And he is going to protect us. Right. And there is no secure place to the Jewish people. And I, I'm sorry to say that I believe that we will arrive at these times. Where the, people, the Jewish people, we need to find a place to be secure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look in, in, the, in Denmark. In, if you see what's happening in yeah. Denmark, you know, yeah. the, in the synagogue. Yeah. Yeah. They tried, the, 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 the Islam is the rising in Europe. Yeah. If you were telling me, if you were talking to me 12 years ago about Europe, I would tell you, of course, look, where is Europe going to? But what's over here in the States? Right. Same thing. Yeah. And, and, and so where is the secure place? Of course, the secure place is only with God. But the world is changing in front of our eyes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what shall we do? Right. How can I react to this to this time? What shall I do? Right. Telling you what, the very very important <coughs> to build. Maybe I will I will I will share with you what God told, guide me to share with the with the body. And I would like to give time for questions in the end. So um, let's open John. John chapter 13, Shloshesai, verse 31. Well, you can read, you can read uh, 34 and 35. Can, you, can, you, can someone read it for me? Yeah. Chapter 13, 34, 35. A new commandment I give to you, <coughs> that you love one another, even, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Mm -hmm. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason that I'm telling you this is, we are mm -hmm. heading to the end times. Yes. And if the body of Yeshua is not trusting on each other now, mm -hmm. how can we trust on each other in the end times? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we must work on it. We know that the enemy is trying to split. The enemy is trying to split the congregation. The enemy is trying to divide the house of God. The enemy is trying to take. And this is our time to build unity, to build trust. Here, in the York, I don't know. Uh, I know what will happen in Israel. I don't know what will happen here. But I will tell you, surely you will not have a cell phone. Oh, you will have a cell phone, but you will, it will not be charged <coughs> because you will not have electricity yeah. and you will not have gasoline or uh, something is going to happen. Yes. yes. And this is the time for you to build your communities here yes. in the diaspora outside of the land of Israel. This is the time for you to build a relationship and I'm so happy to see what you're doing here mm -hmm. and, and that you're going back to your communities yeah. Very, very important to build trust, to build loyalty, to live in love, to be, to show the love of God to the neighbors around us. And, and when you open the TV, when when people open their media, be careful from the from the tongues against Israel, right. <laughs> because the next war that we are going to have. Okay, last summer I told you I shared about the soldiers that died. Yeah. From mm -hmm. yes, so last summer was tough. Last summer was tough for us, mm -hmm. but the next war with with uh, Lebanon, Israel, we cannot. 
if we could stand against rockets that came from Gaza with the Iron Dome, we put here, there, there, Iron Dome, protect, hallelujah, which they don't need to shoot even one missiles. And I, I was over there when they shoot it, and, and I was laying on the, on the, on the floor like this. The next war from Lebanon, they are planning to send 1,000 rockets a day. So Israel cannot stand this. And Israel is going to destroy South Lebanon. And you will hear, uh, you will hear a lot of damage that will happen in the South Lebanon. And yes, your neighbors, the people around you will say, Israel is bad, Israel is bad, Israel is bad. But what can we do? Right. They're already saying that. Yeah, they're already. You know what? If we will behave well, they will say that we are okay. <laughs> no. Even if we will be a bell, they will say that we are not okay. Mm -hmm. We will never be okay. That's right. for, for bad and for good things. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I can talk, go with you about Ezekiel 37 and 38, the names. You want to know the names of the nations that will come to attack as well? Uh, if you go to Ezekiel 37, 38, you will see the, the dry bones, and then you have the, the names of the uh, Magog and Gog and, and all over the names of the nations that mentioned over there, Gomer, Togema. Mm -hmm. I will do this, I'm going to do this to you like this, on one leg. Go to Genesis, to the kids of, of, right. of Japheth. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You will see that these kids of Japheth they will come to attack Israel. The rabbis, I don't say that I believe in this, but the rabbis right now uh, perform a new thing, and it is thing they are saying that uh, in 2015, uh, 22 to December 2015, the Messiah will come. Because of the red moons and, and all of these four red moons and also the Shemitah year and all of this. I believe that it will come now. But I don't see the temple yet that it says that yeah. it will be built. Yeah. Yeah. Things need to be to be done. And of course Yeshua says that for this for the sake of the of the holy he will short these days. Right. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Hallelujah, maybe. Yes. If we come in the end of this year, I believe that we will see him within our life. We will see him to yeah. return to yes. Jerusalem to sit on this run. Yeah. He says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, we will not come until we will say, Baruch Haba B'Shem yeah. And I believe that this is the job for the local believers to, to, to share the, the, with, with the Israeli people the love of God. Mm -hmm. How to walk with the Holy Spirit. How to walk with Yeshua. Yeah. How to know him? Okay, I, 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 uh, I will give time for questions. But another story that ministries that we are doing for us, unity is very important for um, for the body. And so God is putting on my wife and my heart to bring the Messianic congregation in the Western Galilee, leaders, people, children together. The Lord put on our on my heart to build a messianic school where uh, the kids can study. Please pray for our children. If I told you that, I remember that I told you that we are 0.002% of the population. Right. Our kids, one child in his class who believe in, his, in Yeshua even in school. Wow. And you know that we, we are people. We want to be like our brothers and yeah. sisters. We want to be yeah. like them. Yeah. You know that here is a Christian country, so you go send your child to school, there is different denomination of Christianity, but in Israel, to believe in Yeshua, it's a shame. The community is against us. Yes, they are the chosen people. This is the people that God chose them, but yet they are against Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And our kids, and I always say this, you can born Muslims, die Muslim. You can born Christian, you born Christian, die Christian. You can born Jewish, die Jewish. But you need to invite Yeshua into your heart to be born in Him. Right. <laughs> so uh, we want to see them receiving Yeshua into their heart. Yeah. Tali, my wife and I, we are uh, started an after-school program, which the, we bring kids from the Western Galilee once a week in, in real unity. 
uh, among the kids. We provide for them after school, an after school program, two sessions, two classroom, dinner, transportation, building the body, equipping the signs, and please pray for us. Uh, there is a sign up sheet that's running around, so you're welcome to, to be in touch with us to receive a prayer request. There, are two, there is one month and one every week. Uh, if you are intercessor and a man that, or woman that have a heart to pray and to receive, please sign for this. Mm. We need your prayer. So now I will give time for questions. I can share more things, but. <laughs> yeah. And what is the time now? Okay, another five minutes. Okay. You had mentioned that you were rebuilding the tribe of Asher. What? You, you had mentioned that you were rebuilding the tribe of Asher. I like we are, we are, we are located in the area of the tribe of Asher. Yes. And the Lord gave me a vision that the area of Asher is ready to be harvested. Okay. And that, that, that's when I was in the prayer and he showed me that the harvest is ready. Right. Okay. So in some ways spiritually, you know, he told you about the tribe of Asher to do it, so... Do you think he's also rebuilding the bridges back for Asher? Is that what he's doing? Maybe. Well, I Maybe. think... Maybe. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any organizations that um, undergird you, like uh, the Church of Jackson, you know, that does First Friday, they have donations that come in from all over the world, mm -hmm. and they, their heart is for believers, especially in the land of Israel. I know about NJAA, but do you have any other support? I know there's your tax, yes. you know, uh, tax deductible donations listed here, so I'll let you know. But do you have any other assistance? I'm just wondering. If I have an assistance? Yes. No, any other organizations, organizations that are helping you come, come alongside and help you? In Israel? Yes. From, well, from U.S. or? <coughs> Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Yes, we there is MJA support many many ministries in the land of Israel, and we are in, in full communication with them. Uh, we, if you want to support us, there is a, a through a, a spring of hope and our and and tikkun, but um, yes and no. Yeah. Not enough. Yeah, you know. Do food outreach. We're giving support to you Israel food outreach and the food outreach. There is very. The Lord touched him with food. The Lord touched him with goods. The Lord touched him with uh, silver and all. Everyone and we come. The story is combining everything. So it's that's what it's beautiful that it's all together. Yeah. How many members do you have in your congregation? Uh, it's a good question. <laughs> it's a very good question. Uh, even that I don't go, I'm not going for numbers. I'm going for quality. We are, we are seventy people. Seven. Seven zero. Seven zero. Yeah. And you started in a home fellowship. We started. Okay. We started uh, ten years ago. We were with in home group eleven years ago. We have had only my wife and I and the Lord through a uh, um, X twenty one verse seven. Paul came to visit the city that called Ptolemais. Ptolemais is Akko. And the Lord showed my wife and I that um, it was a congregation, it was a Messianic congregation 2,000 years ago. And God is, is uh, willing to rebuild it. So we are now rebuilding the, the Messianic congregation. Mm. And so uh, this is what, what we are. Yeah. Your idea for the Messianic Jewish School is very exciting. Mm -hmm. how, how, how far along is that, or how many steps do you take towards that? The Messianic Jewish School for children. Uh, you know, um, 17 years ago, the Lord showed me that we will have a building mm -hmm. in Arco. Mm -hmm. We have a building. You remember last time I came over here, I, I talked about the building. We have beautiful building. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. This is the way that we are using the facility. Tell me, you, some of you can a visit to see that, and um, that was 17 years ago. I thought my duty is finished, <laughs> but then God told me that behind every mountain there is another mountain. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. So behind every vision yeah. there is another vision, yeah. and He showed me this my vision for school. How much time? For me, again, I am not a selfish. 
I don't think we're supposed to work individual. We're supposed to work in the network. Mm -hmm. So a congregation from Naharia, congregation from Kalmia, congregation from Akko, congregation mm -hmm. from the Western Galilee, the leadership, Arabic and Jewish, we are bringing them together, praying over it. And, 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 and when it will be something of together, it will be birth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it will happen, <coughs> God knows. Mm -hmm. But I'm raising, raising for it. I need $20 million for it. Let's take an offering. Whoops. Of your 70 members, how many are Jews and how many are Gentiles? 80% uh, Jewish, 85% Jewish. Yes. Yeah, 85% yeah, Jewish. And did you say, is the congregation right in Akko as well? Yes. And I, we visited there, I think it was two years ago, Akko. Um, can you explain, like, what is the percentage of the Arab population? Because okay. I saw quite a strong yeah. Arab presence. Akko is 60,000 people. Out of the 60,000 people, uh, you have 40% um, uh, Arabs, and you have 60% Jewish. Out of the 40% Arabs, you have uh, 75 percent Muslims, mm -hmm. and then the rest are Christian Christians, no uh, uh, Orthodox and and the Catholic, and yeah. so this is the the numbers. Because I think we even heard the call to prayer, maybe, mm -hmm. or maybe not. You know, the call to prayer. I think we might have heard. Uh, there is a Muslim prayer. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. Every at five o'clock in the morning, they are <laughs> waking up and they are, there is a big fight about it. But yeah, they are doing it every day in the first time. And they are they are putting volume high to provoke. It. And they wanted to build a mosque in the city in the middle of the Jewish neighborhood, and the mayor did not agree. So yeah. Are you guys using ultrasounds for your pro-life? Ultrasound, it's a good, I wish we could have this. Thanks. I wish, but A, it's not legal, because no, we need to have the machine, and, but with the machine we need to have a man or woman with a license to do it. Now, we need to have Israeli license, and here's the problem. In Israel, it's the complete, uh, uh, everything is hard to achieve. You can achieve it, but it's like... Yeah. It's all, it's all works, I'm telling you. I'm sorry, Guy, but our other speaker's supposed to be starting a minute Yes, ago. okay, uh, so thank you so much.